I'm Stacy, and welcome to the kitchen of my old Kentucky home. Well, when fall is in the air, I start thinking about candy, both eating it and making it. So today, I'm going to be making a very traditional Louisville recipe. In fact, a candy that was actually invented in the city back in the late 1880s, the Majesca. I'll tell you the history of this candy when we make it. Jessica is going to be whipping up one of those famous bourbon cocktails, and this time with a chocolate base. Let's get started. For our Majesca ingredients, we will need one cup of heavy cream, one cup of sugar, a half a cup of light corn syrup, two tablespoons of butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a package of marshmallows. We're here at the stove and we're gonna need a couple things to get started. You're gonna need a heavy bottom saucepan and then a smaller saucepan. And you'll also need a candy thermometer that can show you what a softball stage is. So we're gonna take our heavy whipping cream, remember we have one cup, and we're gonna put half of it in one pan. So half a cup, and a half a cup in the other. We're gonna bring one to, we're just gonna warm this pan up, we just want warm uh, cream. I'm gonna put this on just a low to medium, just to get that warm. And we're gonna start to boil the half a cup that's in the heavy bottom saucepan, so kind of a, high medium. We're gonna add the one cup of just white table sugar and the half a cup of light corn syrup. And we are going to stir this constantly until it reaches a soft ball stage, which will show you what that is when we get there. Okay, we are at a soft boil stage here at 220, not quite to soft ball, and we're gonna add this warmed cream, and that's gonna take down the temp just a little bit. And we're gonna pour it in a slow, steady stream. And we're going to keep stirring. We're gonna add our butter a half a tablespoon at a time. Kind of eyeball that. Wish you could smell this because it's starting to smell candy sweet. It's really going to change when we add that vanilla in a minute, especially the fancy bourbon vanilla that we're using. Okay, I'm going to do that four times. So we've reached the softball stage. You can see it on this candy thermometer. It's also, if you don't have one that tells you, it's about 238 degrees. We're gonna take this off the heat. Just gonna switch burners to this one that's cool. We're gonna add our teaspoon of vanilla. Now you can really start to smell that. And we're gonna add our salt. And I just used a finely um, ground sea salt in that. Okay, we're gonna let this cool for about five minutes and we're gonna start dipping some marshmallows. Okay, while we've got the caramel sauce still cooling, uh, the next thing we're gonna need to do is you're gonna need a, a marble pastry board or slab. I probably could have, these are kind of Cory encounters, probably could do it on that, but just, just in case, um, pastry board's the best way to go on this. And you're gonna take some butter, just throw it on the slab and get it all greased up so these little candy treats don't stick. Simple as that. Okay, our caramel sauce, which is basically what this is, has reached its softball stage. And really, you could simply pour this over ice cream and call it a day at this point. But we're gonna make it even more special by dipping some marshmallows in it. I have got some kind of um, more artisanal marshmallows. You can, of course, make your own and really upmarket this whole recipe. Or you could use Jet Puffs. Um, really, it's your choice, but we've got some artisanal ones and we, you can cut them anyway. I've seen them recipes where they're cut um, more uh, vertically. We went on across these so they are make little nice circles. And when you dip, you wanna make sure, we've cut these in half, so there's a kind of sticky side where we made the cut and then sort of the side that has just like, like almost like a powdery sugar finish to it. You wanna put that dry side in your spoon or if you put the sticky side, you're gonna have some sticking problems. So what we're simply gonna do is put a marshmallow dry side on our spoon and dip it in our softball stage 
caramel sauce. And we're just gonna pick him up out of there, or her, I don't know why I think it's a he, and drop him on our little marble slab. And we're gonna keep doing it till we've used an entire bag of marshmallows or used up all our sauce. So while I do that, I wanna tell you a little of the history, the origin story of Majeska's. This is one I love because we've done a lot of recipes here on the show that are Kentucky favorites, uh, like a burgoo. Um, sometimes they're just Southern favorites, like a fried chicken or pimento cheese, and they're you know, Louisville or Kentucky spin on these recipes. And then we've done some that are straight up out of Louisville, like Benedictine and the hot brown. This is one of those. Its origin story is in Louisville, Kentucky. So the story goes like this. There was a man by the name of Anton Busaf, who was a French um, candy maker, immigrated um, to the States. And in, in 1883, he attended a performance at the Macaulay Theater of a very famous Polish actress at the time. She had recently immigrated to the U.S. as well. And she was in this performance. Her name was Helen Majeska. He was so enthralled with her performance and her beauty at the time, it is said, that he wanted to name a candy after her. And he had been perfecting this very recipe for what he called at the time, caramel biscuits. So he asked uh, Miss Majeska if he could in fact name the candy after her uh, in tribute. She said yes, signed an autograph photo to him, and sort of the rest is history. The story goes a little more in that um, Anton passed this recipe, of course, down to his son, Edgar, which ran the candy shop until it very fatefully burnt to the ground in 1947, the, the candy shop on 4th Street in downtown Louisville. So uh, Edgar apparently asked another local candy maker, another candy family at the time, the Muth family, who had, actually still has, their uh, store on East Market Street, if he could use their kitchen to make his Majeskas. And in a very Louisville and Kentucky and Southern way, they of course obliged and they made candy side by side until he sold them the recipe in later years. I'm very proud to say that Muse is making Majeskas to this day. Some people call them over the years it became um, Majestics, um, but the real name was after the Polish actors, Hel Majeska. Now, you can find these when you come to Louisville at Muse. Uh, you can also find them, uh, Bowers in Frankfurt makes their own version. In fact, there's a little candy store called Dundee Candy Shop that sells their version. Another version is made at a, a newer candy store in Louisville, a more modern one called Art Eatables, which also makes wonderful bourbon truffles. And then right over across the bridge in Southern Indiana, uh, in Jeffersonville, which is almost like a neighborhood of Louisville's, Schimpf's, which is just a very old timey candy store, um, makes their version as well. So you can come to Louisville, buy them, you can mail order them in some cases, or now, you can make your very own recipe of Majeska's and I hope you will. So I'm ready to drink to this and Jessica is going to whip up a bourbon chocolate cocktail like I promised and I'm about ready to join her. Since we're doing a candy episode, I decided to create a cocktail that is inspired by one I had at one of our urban bourbon trail restaurants, Veronese, and it's a bourbon chocolate martini. And this one kind of reminds me of those chocolate orange candies that you get that come in the shape of an orange and break off into segments. So we're making that today with Johnny Drum Bourbon, Sherry, and chocolate liqueur. So we're gonna take one ounce of bourbon, and pour it into our shaker, and then we're going to just do half an ounce of the sherry, and a half ounce of the chocolate liqueur as well. We're just going to add ice to our shaker and give it a good shake. All right, now that everything is chilled and combined well together, we're just going to strain that into a martini glass. And I'm gonna garnish it with an orange slice. And that's all there is to it. It's a bourbon chocolate martini. 
Well, Jessica, while you were making the cocktail, I went ahead and finished the Majescas, which I let cool for about two hours, and then I wrapped, as tradition would have it, in uh, little cut squares of wax paper. So this is how they're traditionally served. And they look beautiful. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. They turned out really well, I think. Um, and I've got to tell you the touching family Yates story, or at least I think they're touching anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've eaten Majescas for a long time, but when I got married, my husband's grandmother, who we ended up calling Gigi when my daughter was born, um, traditionally she would give everyone in the family that reached a certain age uh, for their birthday, they'd get a $2 bill and a little baggie of Majescas from Muse Candy. Mm -hmm. And she did that until she died at the age of 98, just a couple of years ago. She'd still have people take her down to Muse. So That's really these sweet. remind me of her. Well, Majescas are actually my mom's absolute favorite candy oh. too. So every year we put them in her stocking for Christmas. Isn't that cool? And she's yeah. gluten, uh, she has a gluten allergy. So right. Perfect and these are, yeah, okay. perfect. Just happen to be that way. Well, I can't wait to try this chocolate martini and cheers to these family traditions. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. I think another another hit. She's the adult. Oh, uh, George, treat. she's done it again. <laughs> oh. Well, for more great recipes like Majesca's and a chocolate martini, please continue to watch us at culinarylouisville.com. And we'll see you next time on bourbon and biscuits. Cheers. <laughs>